Kids, um, today's video is very pointed, it's very serious. The intent is to create contemporaneous um, video and notes about um, malpractice um, with my schizoaffective disorder. Um, the situation became very grave over the last 12 days and um, there was absolutely no excuse for it. And some of the information I was told by my doctor is just downright nearly fatal. And uh, that's just not acceptable. So um, I'm going to tell a story, bear with me, but I need to be as clear as possible because this is something that no person with mental illness should ever have to tolerate. Starting in August, I was given a drug called Excitalopram. And the reason for this drug, even though I had reported to my psychiatrist that I was doing fine on bupropion and Xanax, um, or alprazolam as they call it, um, he decided that I needed something extra. So he put me on something called excitalopram. This drug took away, this drug put me into a deep depression and took away all my human emotions for five, over five months. I did not have a human emotion all the end of the summer, all the way through the fall and into the first or second week of January of 2018. So that's totally unacceptable. I reported this to him several times during meetings and he did not seem to be concerned that I was basically sociopathic at that point. Um, which was strange. Now, in our last visit, um, before, I think it was either the beginning of the year or the end of last year, uh, he decided to put me on a medicine called Lamotrigine, Lamotrigine, um, and it is a uh, medication that supposedly for, for psych patients is a, a mood stabilizer, but its main use is for people that have epilepsy or seizures of some sort, and I don't have that. So um, he warned me that, that, is, that there's a high risk uh, and a fatal risk of allergic reaction. So why he would put me on something like that, I don't know. But in the titration pack, which is a five-week program, at week three, day four, I had an amazingly horrible allergic reaction and ended up in um, the hospital at the ER. And that was last week. And um, he was on vacation. And um, unfortunately, one of his nurses uh, warned me not to stop taking the medicine because that would harm me further, even though um, the ER doctors insisted I never take it again, and a psychiatrist that was acting in his place also said, don't ever take that again. So his nurses and his staff were very ill-informed and potentially could have given me fatal information if I had listened to it. And I have witnesses to that. Now, when he came back this last week on Monday, um, he found the report of me going to the hospital. So he called me in on Tuesday for an emergency meeting and um, wanted, you know, talked about the allergic reaction and everything else. And uh, on Tuesday afternoon, he, and I have a witness, um, gave me a prescription for oxcarbaz, oxcarbaz, Carbazepine, I guess that's how you pronounce it. And um, this, of course, was another uh, medicine for mood stabilization, even though I'm not having a problem with mood stabilization currently. And um, this medication is also an anti-seizure medication. Like the last one, I had just had an allergic reaction to uh, four or five days previously. So um, Tuesday night, I had the prescription filled. I took the first pill. This Wednesday morning, I took the second pill and began my day, and I was already having an allergic reaction. Now, at some, I went to one doctor who verified I was having an allergic reaction, which was a skin doctor. I went to the Lighthouse, which has 
uh, certified therapists and social workers and stuff on site, and they all verified it because they know me well that something was wrong. I was having an allergic reaction. They sent me back to Dr. Granani's office on Wednesday morning around 9 a.m. to to talk to him about the allergic reaction. He took he took me into the office very quickly. He seemed very shocked that I was having an allergic reaction. He noticed physically I was having one. He then made a statement which is nonsensical. It was not helpful at all, saying that he'd never had a patient that had an allergic reaction to this medication that I was taking. And I simply looked at him and said, but obviously you can see I'm having one. So you can't say that now. That's not a valid point. And kind of stunned for an answer, um, I asked him clearly, should I go to an ER? Do you have something for me? What should I do? I'm the patient. I'm having an allergic reaction. And part of my allergic reaction was being very flushed red, being itchy, and being extremely nauseous. And his response to me was, I said, is this potentially fatal? And he said, no, don't worry about it. Just go home and take a Benadryl. That was his exact words. Just go home and take a Benadryl. Now, this is somebody that's highly nauseous. I was highly nauseous. I said, but I'm highly nauseous and Benadryl tablets tend to make me more nauseous or nauseous to begin with. And he said, well, then don't worry about it. Take it later in the afternoon or before you go to bed. And I asked him clearly, so I should just keep going all day being allergic? He's like, yeah, don't worry about it. You're going to be fine. That was his words. And I left his office. I went back to the professionals at the lighthouse and I explained to them exactly what I just told you. And they were shocked and horrified that a doctor would say such a thing. And I sat down uh, to be supervised for a little while because I was really not feeling well. And I ended up rushing to the bathroom and having extreme um, vomiting, extreme vomiting, not just vomiting, extreme physical convulsive vomiting. I stopped. I reported that information to them. They immediately sent me home and told me to go seek medical care, which I went again to the ER. By the time I got to the ER after all this delay and after my doctor telling me not to worry about it, this is Dr. Granani again saying not to worry about it, uh, I ended up in extreme convulsions. I had seizures. Uh, I My vision became blurry. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know where I was. I didn't know why I was. Um, it was a life-changing event for me, and it wasn't a life-changing event in any kind of positive way. And I do suffer from PTSD. I have for decades now, and I rarely have PTSD episodes. I, they're very well controlled, but I had a complete PTSD meltdown in the hospital, and I should never have to feel that unnecessarily from a professional psychiatrist maltreatment. So I'm making this contemporaneous note to explain all of this in detail in case in the future something comes out of it because no one, and please mentally ill people, no one put up with this kind of treatment because sadly when you lose control in a hospital setting, for example, um, they stop taking you seriously as soon as they find out you are a mental patient. Even though you have your facilities and your faculties and, and you know you know you're a higher functioning mentally ill person, they will still just totally discount you and anything you have to say. When you have mental illness, the problem is people stop listening. Doctors stop listening, therapists stop listening, all kinds of professionals stop listening. It just comes with the territory, it seems, that they get jaded after so many years of being in the business and they just kind of 
go with whatever they've seen before or what they know or what they're comfortable with. And that's simply not acceptable. Every one of us should be treated as an individual. And every one of us should have an individual treatment plan. And every one of us should be looked at for our other health issues and how that might affect or connect medic with medication and other things so we don't have adverse effects. For example, a lot of medications cause increased um, depression or suicidal thoughts. Uh, I have a psoriasis medication that causes depression and suicidal thoughts. And I had very strong suicidal thoughts as I was stepping up on that particular medication. And it was rough for a long time. A lot of us can handle these tough times with medications, but when they're not justified, why are we taking them? Now you, you're supposed to, in, in the real world, you're supposed to, you know, listen to your doctor's advice. That's why they're the doctor. And if they're giving you bad advice or they're giving you absolutely ridiculous advice, like don't go seek help for an allergic reaction, that is just malpractice. Pure and simple, unadulterated malpractice. So I hope anyone that gets a chance to watch this, watches it or shares it with somebody that's mentally ill, like myself, because being discounted or being a throwaway is no way to live and you don't have to. You don't have to do that. You can make them communicate with you. You can make them make a plan just for you and not just something they give to everybody because of whatever reason. Maybe they're making an extra profit. It's unacceptable. Thanks for listening. I hope everybody stays safe. Have a great day.